I'm going to tell you some numbers, fractions, really. And I want you to tell me the emotions those numbers make you feel. Ready? One half. Nothing much, right? Five sixths. That's a pretty sad fraction. How about four fifths? That's much better. What about ten elevenths? Ah, why would I even make you hear that one? If it seems absurd to identify emotions with these numbers, consider that instead of hearing the words for those fractions, you heard the fractions themselves, or at least waves of cascading air heading towards your ears with wavelengths that match those ratios. For example, one half, five sixths, four fifths, and ten elevenths. Suddenly, the numbers carry emotional significance to a lot of people. And this isn't just in the same way that putting a number before the word cake changes the emotional meaning because more cake is good, or putting a number before dead changes the meaning because more death is bad. The original tone is, well, neutral. Somehow, the mathematical ratio of two or more waves, at least to human minds, carries emotional meaning. That emotional distinction you heard in the middle, lots of people describe the 5-6 ratio as sad, and the 4 fifths ratio as happy. They might vary a little bit in the words they use to describe it. Instead of happy, you might use cloying, or instead of sad, you might use the word sincere. But an emotional distinction between these two ratios appears to be a common characteristic to humans. We call this distinction distinction a major versus minor interval. Often we pair these intervals with another ratio, one based on a two-thirds fraction, to create what we call a major versus minor chord. If you look at these combinations one at a time, you can see that the wavelengths represented by the major chord, when you stack them up on top of each other, they line up. The peak of the first tone will line up with both of the other two after four cycles. However, if you swap the major interval out for the minor interval, creating a minor chord, the number of cycles it takes jumps way up to 10. This is what musicians call an increase in dissonance, which changes the emotional character of the tone combination. This isn't extremely dissonant. The ratio of 10 to 11 creates a much more negative feeling, but it's enough to make most people experience a shift in the emotional reaction. So which combinations do people like best? Well, the symbolist ratios are all the powers of two, one half, one fourth, and one eighth. They line up with every peak of the bass tone, which is so uniform that lots of people just call it the same note, only higher. Musicians call it an octave. This same soundingness is because of the fact that it takes no time at all for the peaks of the sound waves to line up. So let's ignore octaves because they're too boring. Two thirds is an easy one to line up, only two cycles, and we're back together again. One third might jump to your mind now too, but let's ignore that one because that's just half of two thirds, and as we just said, it sounds the same. But three fourths would count. We've already discovered that we like four fifths, and following the same principle, we can't count two fifths, because that's just half. And one fifth is just half of that, all octaves. But you can count three fifths. Now, if we subdivide any further, we're definitely gonna come up with some more dissonant combinations. So let's see where we're at at the moment. We've got the bass tone, two thirds, three fourths, four fifths, and three fifths. So now, do any of these notes sound familiar? They should. In fact, if you skip the four-fifths fraction, which is quite often paired with the bass tone anyway, you get the four intervals that are some of the most common in popular music. Play each tone as its own chord. You get what people have called the 50s progression, or what Hank Green called the ice cream changes. Hank and others have demonstrated that loads of popular songs can be played with just these four chords. And as it turns out, these four chords are just some of the simplest, most harmonious fractions that math affords us. But wait, you say, you know enough about music to know that most people don't talk about it like this. Notes are letters, or maybe occasionally just referred to as intervals like third and fifth, but not fractions. Even the word octave. Oct means eight, not one half. So what's going on? How do we go from these harmonious fractions to notes with letters? The answer here is that at some point, someone noticed another ratio that has special characteristics. That interval is 1.059463 to one. Not that nice to listen to either. But something makes this ratio unique. 1.059463 happens to be 2 to the 1 12th power. That means you can take 1, multiply it by 1.06, multiply that new number by 1.06, and keep going to get 12 steps from 1 to 2, each being an equal ratio. Why is that useful? It's useful because those numbers match up 
really, really closely to the ratios we were talking about before. Now what you see here inverts the fractions we were talking about. Three-fourths becomes four-thirds, one-half becomes just two, etc. This is because we'll be talking about frequencies instead of wavelengths, but you can see all the same ratios on this chart. But they're not exact though. 1.498 isn't exactly three over two, and wasn't that exact harmony exactly what we were counting on? Aren't tones supposed to sound awful if they're really close but not quite the same? What this scale depends on is what psychologists call a just noticeable difference. When you pair notes that are really close together, most people can't tell the difference, even if they're over the top of each other. The difference you just heard is within the threshold of a just noticeable difference, and actually represents the difference in the seventh step between 1.498 and 3 over 2, whereas some of the dissonant combinations you heard earlier take a relatively longer time for the peaks to line up again. These combinations take a relatively longer time for your brain to realize they're out of sync in the first place. So this pattern based on 12 steps of equal ratio is an example of what's called equal temperament tuning, and some cultures don't use it. They might instead value more highly that exact harmony we we had been demonstrating earlier, and come up with a system with more than 12 steps, or perhaps come up with an entirely different system. But remember when we put chords on top of those most common four intervals earlier? When you look at the notes that were in those chords, they line up with some of the other steps that we hadn't yet used. And if you take all those notes and play them in order, you get a major scale. It's the steps in this scale from which we get some of the common names for intervals like third and fifth and octave for eight. And yes, the letters. So this is some explanation of why we all like a lot of the same music. There are some combinations of tones that are just really appealing to humans, and they're based on these simple ratios. That doesn't mean that good music will always use just these. What appeals to a lot of people is to switch between chords that are dissonant and more harmonious, or play chords that are themselves not dissonant, but are dissonant with chords you've just heard and might still be ringing in your ears, building expectations based on patterns you may have heard before and then violating those expectations. Expectations. But that might depend on what patterns you've heard before, leading to the much broader question of what makes our musical tastes unique? We'll cover some of the social influences on musical taste that account for how people get such diverse interests next time. <laughs>